All right, guys, another thing that wrapped up recently um, is Miss Marvel. So Miss Marvel is the latest Disney Plus show. It is the 36th MCU property. And I know a lot of you guys want to include Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Agent Carter. I want to say for the record, whenever I do my rankings, and I will do another ranking at some point soon, I have a feeling that Kevin Feige will delineate very clearly when Phase 4 is ending at Comic-Con. I hope so. I don't think it's Thor Love and Thunder. I also don't think it's She-Hulk. I, I have a feeling it might be um, maybe Fantastic Four. I think that's very appropriate, actually. Uh, that makes sense, right? You know, end phase four with Fantastic Four. I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, so that, I think, will um, be very fun. That's my prediction, to get, by the way, guys, for those of you who are, who are listening to this segment, that uh, Kevin Feige will announce the end of phase four and the beginning of phase five, and maybe the end of phase five, and uh, Fantastic Four will be the end of phase four. That's just my prediction. Anyways, it makes too much sense, right? Anyways, um, but yeah, Miss Marvel was, was a show that I had not been looking forward to at all before the... the you know, the trailer came out. I saw, I saw the trailer. Looked fun. Um, and I, I went into the show, obviously, as always, with, with optimism, as I always do. And I loved the first three episodes. I loved the coming-of-age story. I loved the exploration of a Muslim Pakistani family living in the United States in Jersey City and the kind of, like, the racial undertones and, and the social commentary that... Um, not racial undertones. What do I mean by that? Like sort of the, the commentary on race relations and, 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 and politics in the United States today. I think that that was done very cleverly in the midst of a high school coming of age uh, story uh, with a charming, charming young lead in Amon Vellani. What a wonderful performance she, she has given thus far in the series. Um, I love the stylistic choices of the text bubbles and the graffiti on the walls and, and just her discovering who she really is and the family dynamics with uh, Muniba, is that uh, is that the mother's name? Um, and uh, Yusuf, I believe, is the father's name. Uh, let me look that up. I, I want to make sure I get that right. I, I believe I misspoke uh, the other day. And, um, let's see, Miss Marvel cast. I, I just want to make sure I get these names right because I, I am not Pakistani. I'm not, I, so I just want to make sure. Um, there's Bruno. Uh, there's Kareem and Kamran. That's always confused me. Yeah, Muniba um, and Yusuf. Yeah, I mean, those two actors. And also, um, again, I don't want to mess this up. Amir. Yeah, Amir, the brother's name. Um, I love the brother as well. I love uh, his wife. I, I just, I think that the show cast all these characters so impeccably well. Um, and I thought the first three episodes were just fantastic. Now, the clandestines, you know, they weren't my favorite in episodes one, two, and three. Uh, but I didn't think they detracted that much from the show. In fact, I even think that that uh, Najma, the uh, the mother of uh, this is Kamran, yes, Kamran, um, was was good in episode three. But again, she kind of turned into a villain. But I thought, you know, it's fine. Like episode three, it, the ending was was fine. Like with the the fight in the uh, the wedding banquet hall. The wedding scene, by the way, is awesome. It's just awesome, you know. Okay, so then we get into episode four, and we get into episode five. And now looking back at the show as a six six part series, it's it's very clear to me now. Like I said in the last episode, my last uh, Miss Marvel review, episode five um, and episode four, I I don't dislike them because of the elements of going to Pakistan. Like I said, it's the combination of going to Pakistan, which I loved. I loved exploring the culture of Pakistan and 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 really seeing another side of the MCU and another side of the world, quite frankly. Um, but like I said, it felt very jarring within this show because the show had been very grounded. It had been very, you know, uh, high school focused, high school centric. And it now looking back, I can I can very confidently say that those two episodes feel like two episodes of season two, maybe where, where Kamala goes to Pakistan and, and has another threat to face. So that was disappointing to me because those two episodes felt crazy rushed. Um... For any of you who think I, you know, I, I'm not going to blame you if you like those episodes at all. Again, uh, everything, you know, all these episodes, it, it hits you in a different way, and that's fine. So if you like these two episodes, you know, I'm not trying to, to discredit that at all. But I'm saying that they didn't work for me. And part of the reason was because you introduced all these new characters into the show. Um, like like, like uh, Kareem and and um, his mentor, I forget his name. Um, Walid, I'm going to mispronounce it i'm gonna forget it so i just want to make sure um again i don't want to be disrespectful i want to uh, honor uh the cast yet while 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 lead while lead so again I, I i apologize i am uh i'm doing my best but um yeah anyways um uh, apologies if i've if i've 
inadvertently offended anybody with my mispronunciations. I, I do sincerely apologize for that. Um, anyways, yeah, so I, you know, those characters were introduced so rapidly and so, they were so rushed that it was really hard to care about them, you know? And I, I do appreciate the, the backstory with Aisha and the Bengal and stuff like that. Um, it just felt like a different show. And not not a good one, in my opinion. Not at least in the context of of the first three episodes that we'd been given, so, you know. So there's that. Um, and then we get into episode six. And also, by the way, in episode five, the clandestines who had been the villains of of season one disintegrated for no reason. Because I mean, for all this talk about the Noor dimension kind of trying to overtake America or, or the world or whatever. You know, spoilers ahead for season episode six. None of that happened. Um, and so as I went into episode six, I was like, okay, you know, what are we going to get here? Uh, here's what I'll say about episode six. The parts of episode six that tie back into episodes four and five don't work still. They still don't work. Um, I'm sorry to whoever plays the, the the character of Kamran. I don't think it's his fault. I think that Kamran is just so poorly written along with the rest of the clandestines that it just, it doesn't work. It, um, it feels rushed it feels out of nowhere um and also Kamran was gonna implode with the energy or whatever like halfway through the episode episode six and then he's, he's fine at the end and he meets kareem two characters i do not care about at all in the slightest at all which is disappointing to me that they, they they're gonna choose to focus on that and also just skipping ahead to the resolution of the episode i mean like miss marvel kamala is like hey let's you know go to the docks go to the harbor you know someone will meet you there and that's it. Like, we don't see him going to the harbor. We just kind of see him disappear, and that's the end of the episode. That's that's effectively the resolution of the episode. So again, all the stuff from episodes four and five don't work at all. Everything else that ties back to episodes one, two, and three work tremendously. The finale in itself, as a standalone episode, and as an episode that ties back to episodes one, two, and three, is awesome. It is an awesome episode. I, I wrote this in my community page uh, shortly after I... I watched the episode. I said that this is a great finale for a different show than what we've been given in episodes four and five. Um, there is a great show of episodes one, two, and three, and then a separate, a different, you know, version of episodes four, five, six, maybe even seven, like four extra episodes sandwiched in between the finale and episode three that make this the best Disney Plus show that Marvel has done. Better than WandaVision. Unfortunately, instead of that, we got episodes four and five, and then we got a finale that felt kind of rushed because it didn't really tie up everything together that it had promised to, you know, it had been promising to tie up, um, which is a bummer, right? It's it's a bummer because this this show, while it is my second favorite Disney Plus MCU show, I think pretty pretty squarely over Moon Knight right now, um, it still is not great. It needed two more episodes, I think. Like, I needed an episode four in between the actual episode three and four, and I needed an episode six in between the actual episode five and six, I think. You know, it just needed a couple more episodes. Um, but that being said, like I said, this episode in itself is awesome, and I don't think it's any surprise that it it, it is because it's stuck to the, the style and the tone of episodes one, two, and three. You get a lot of the stylistic uh, imagery, again, with with the, you know, the planning on the, on the chalkboard. Um, you get Bruno back and Nakia back. And I love those two characters. They were great. They were great in the series. And and you felt their absence in episodes four and five, which is disappointing. But again, they're here. And I I really, I just had a great time with the finale. I, I love the line. Um, you know, I think that it's interesting that Damage Control is the villain of the series, which I think they could have been the villain from the beginning. Honestly, you didn't need the clandestines in the series. Honestly, that's my problem with Miss Marvel. I, I just realized now. Just take out the entire clandestine part of this this show, make it its own season, season two, uh, after the Marvels or whatever, and just have it be Damage Control. Have it be Damage Control trying to find this, you know, enhanced individual, and she's trying to figure out her powers. That's really what I think the show should have been. Alas, anyways, um, you get that Asian uh, Deaver, um, again, who, you know, is 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 uh, appropriately annoying and infuriating, which is which is what the character is supposed to be. Um, Agent Cleary, it seems like, is a little bit more level-headed, uh, the guy from Spider-Man No Way Home, although he is still kind of a jerk, but, you know, a little bit more level-headed. Um, but yeah, you get this whole awesome, fun montage action scene um, in, in the high school. Zoe is back for no reason, I think. 
I was a little surprised by that, but again, like I, I think the humor of the show kind of returns to where it had been before. I laughed a few times throughout the episode. I love the line where um, Kamala is trying to reveal um, to her parents that she is Miss Marvel, and and the, and and Muniba, the mom, is like, "No, nah, I already told them." And I thought that was so funny. That was so well done. I love the line where uh, they go to the 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 damage control goes to the mosque, and the guy's like, you know. He, he, he says this really profound profound quote or whatever and uh you know the agent uh is kind of like brushing it aside in a very dismissive and you know frankly not a great way and the guy's like actually that was abraham lincoln and i thought that was so funny i i don't know that was like the funniest li line to me in the entire episode uh also bruno dancing i uh, didn't know i needed that in my life but i guess i do because that was hilarious and i thought that was so funny um Again, everything just with Kamran and, and Kamala, I didn't buy. You know, I didn't buy the emotional sort of part in, in the little uh, energy dome or whatever. And uh, to be quite honest, one of the other complaints I have about the finale is that the CGI looks not great in certain parts. Um, I don't think our powers look really good yet. I don't think. I hope they're better in the Marvels with a bigger budget, maybe and more time, because I don't think the CGI for her powers looks all that good. It looks very 3D cartoonish, in my opinion. Maybe that's just me. Um, so I'm hoping that they figure that out. But yeah, I mean, I love the action. I love the, the sort of conflict. I love how accepting her parents are of her now. Um, I love that as well. And uh, yeah, I mean, the episode kind of wraps up with her kind of flying, uh, uh, jumping away and, and the city of Jersey City. It's kind of that Spider-Man, you know, Sam Raimi Spider-Man, the city of New York protecting Peter Parker kind of moment. And it's great. Um, and so we get the wrap of the episode. I'll talk about the two really big revelations, uh, obviously. Um, one being at the end of this episode, one being in the post credit scene, mid credit scene. Um, but the other thing that I wanted to talk about, the other two things I wanted to talk about was um, going into this series, right? One of the things that's been clear to me from phase four of the MCU, and I think it's undeniable, is that the MCU is now trending more towards the comic books, um, at least visually and, and, and more story-wise as well, I think. Um, if you haven't noticed, and I think you, you know it's, it's worth pointing out, every single MCU show, uh, even some of the movies, I think, I think, but more so the shows, I think the shows really, have, have really, really delved into comic accurate looks for the characters you've seen hints of it with vision and wanda and their classic halloween costumes and even wanda's actual costume is is pretty close to that uh it's much closer at least than it used to be um uh, uh falcon and the winter soldier obviously captain america sam wilson it's it's much brighter it's much it's much more white uh it's it's you know it's yeah it's brighter it's much closer to the the captain america costume in the comics um loki uh you have the uh the uh what's his name? classic loki richard e grant uh, obviously um what else is there moon knight obviously great costume uh kate bishop and hawkeye and and hawkeye wearing the purple as well much closer to the comics obviously and so i had seen set photos of miss marvel before seeing the show and i had seen you know the costume and obviously the costume was in the trailers right and i i go this is kind of absurd like there are there is believability in you know the sam wilson kind of brightly colored avengers costume that i go eh, it's not great i would prefer a much much more sleeker armor based suit like even the one that john walker was wearing i think was much better but okay but i saw the pictures of kamala khan in her comics accurate costume and i go i know this is a part of the character but it just doesn't look like it's going to translate well onto the screen what i will say about that is that there are moments in the show where I, I look at the costume and go, this is very clearly, it looks like cosplay. But then the show does a really good job of explaining why that is, that that each different part of the costume is sort of given to her. Um, and, and it is sort of cosplay in a sense. And and I love how the mother gives her the, the costume at the end. I That part to me is just amazing. I love that. And so it kind of makes me go, okay, you know what, like, I, I don't think it looks, it translates super well, it's very, you know, it's, it's bright, it's comic booky, right, with the scarf, and, but, you know what, I can buy it, I can buy it. The other thing that I was a little hesitant about, and it shows, serves me right, is the name. How do you come up with the name Miss Marvel organically? Um, I don't know. I, frankly, I don't even know how they came up with Captain Marvel. I don't think that was mentioned in the movie. You can correct me if I'm wrong. I think they just start calling her 
Captain Marvel at some point. I don't know when or where that is, but anyways. And I thought, okay, well, like, you have Moon Knight, which makes some sense. Hawkeye, you know, whatever. Captain America. Miss Marvel it was a, was always a little bit of a stretch. And She-Hulk is also a little bit of a stretch to me. I know that that's supposed to be satirical and, and spoof and parody and whatever. Um, but I was like, how are you going to get to the conclusion of Miss Marvel as the name? And they sold me. The conversation that Kamala has with her dad is one of the... Again, it is emblematic of the best parts of this show. It is beautiful. It is heartfelt. I love... I don't, I don't know if this is... I'm sure it's true, obviously. It's in the show. That Kamala means Marvel in Urdu, I believe. I I just... I, I love that conversation that, that that he has with her. And he says, you've always been our Miss Marvel. And I, I go, I'm sold. I'm sold. That's it. That's, you know... It, it goes to show you how a well-written show can really pull almost anything off, you know? Um, so I really was a big fan of that. Um, and obviously, let's get to the two big reveals of the show. And this, the first one left me gasping because I thought, oh, maybe... So when Bruno started talking at the end of this, the show, obviously, I thought um, I thought he was going to say, you're an inhuman. Like, there's something inhuman about you. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, tie into, you know, her comic book origins or whatever and maybe bring in the inhumans or whatever. And then he says, like a mutation. And the X-Men 97 theme starts playing. And I got chills. I got chills. My mouth was open. I was silently screaming in my room when I saw that. Um, yeah, that's crazy. Kamala Khan is a mutant. Kamala Khan is the first identified mutant in the MCU. That is crazy. Um, I have no attachment to the comic books. So I'm sorry if that upsets you that she's not inhuman. She didn't get it from the Terrigen Mist or whatever. Sorry, but I don't really care because she's a mutant. That's crazy. Like you will, you will probably see her after the Marvels in an X-Men, some something X-Men related. That's so exciting. Um, for the first time, really since um, I don't know actually, since. Uh, I mean, it's it's actually been a while since I've really been excited for the future of the MCU, like I have been with this show. Because, like, look, Moon Knight, very self-contained. Thor, Love and Thunder, we'll talk about in just a second, very self-contained. Doctor Strange, surprisingly very self-contained. Um, Spider-Man No Way Home, pretty exciting, but also just teasing Doctor Strange, which it didn't really tie into at all. Um, Eternals, kind of weird what they were setting up. Hawkeye, kind of strange what they were setting up. Um... You know, Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi, actually, I was very excited for the future because, you know, you tease that the Ten Rings have this crazy technology and, and all that sort of stuff. So I, I you know, Shang-Chi and Miss Marvel have really gotten me excited for the future of the MCU thus far. And I don't think it's any surprise that it's dealing with the same cir circle of characters, right, with, with Bruce Banner and with Carol Danvers and uh, sort of the pseudo-Avengers, whatever they are right now. Um, I think that part of the MCU I'm really excited for um, going forward. But yeah, I, you know... When they said mutant, I was like, oh, this is crazy. Now, wh whether or not, you know, because, again, it begs the question, there must have been mutants all around, right? Like, the whole time? What, where has Professor X been this whole time? Where has Magneto been this whole time? I'm sure that they will explain that in the future, but I'm just so excited and so happy that Kamala Khan gets to be the first identified mutant in the MCU. That is just, that is so awesome. I, I'm so happy about that. Um, and then let's talk about the post credit scene. Really quick before we jump into Thor: Love and Thunder, I uh, this episode might be a little bit longer. Apologies for that, but uh, I wanted to, wanted to get through everything that I want to talk about. Um, Carol Danvers shows up. She so so Kamala gets this signal from the Bengal, and then she kind of like warps into something, and and Carol Danvers shows up. And I mean, I'm not gonna lie, that seems pretty confusing, but it was good to see Carol again. I can't say that I've said that about a lot of things, but I think that both times she showed up in the post credit scenes of. Uh, Shang-Chi and Miss Marvel. I think I've been actually more excited to see her post Endgame because I think Endgame really did a disservice to her character. She was not good in the, in that movie. One of the things I really don't like about Endgame is Carol Danvers, but uh, I'm excited now. You know, Miss Marvel re will return in the Marvels, and I I'm gonna be honest. I hadn't been looking forward to the Marvels. I said this in my community post, but uh, I love Kamala Khan. I think that Brie Larson is really coming into her own as Carol Danvers, just like how Chris Hemsworth, it took a few movies to get into his own, come into his own as Thor. I think that Tiana uh, Paris has has the ability to be, you know, to do really well as Monica Rambeau and Nick Fury will be back. And I'm sure Ben Mendelsohn will be back. Will be back and I am just so excited to see what happens. I'm not so excited. I'm, I'm more excited to see what happens in the Marvel. So 
yeah, as a whole, Miss Marvel, I think, had four awesome episodes and two pretty poor episodes. Um, and, um, yeah, it will not rank in the top 10 of the MCU. It could have. It very well could have topped WandaVision in a different universe. But um, it will rank towards the upper echelon, I think, towards the upper half. And I'm very happy about that. You know, I uh, hadn't expected much, but this is my favorite, second favorite MCU Disney Plus show. Super happy about that.